It's time to use something different, something light, and something superbly delicious. Something using solely fish as the hero and protein, pun intended. If you didn't guess it from my hilarious play on words, we're gonna be making filet of sole two different ways. Mexican style and Cajun style. Spoiler alert, they're both delicious, but one ends up being the winner. And that one is... Welcome, welcome. My name is Ben and you're watching another Impossibly Kosher video. If you don't know who we are, Impossibly Kosher is a one-of-a-kind channel that focuses on sharing and making authentic recipes from all over the globe, all while ensuring that they stay delicious and 100% kosher. People that know me can attest that I am a meat lover. Well, and an Italian food lover. Well, I love food in general, but sometimes, just sometimes, I get in the mood for something light, something buttery, something that swims. Well, not alive, of course, but you get the picture. And today, I had that urge. So, I'm gonna be making fish, filet of sole to be exact. Sole is a white flatfish, so when compared to its cousin, el salmon, it has far fewer calories, making it a leaner fish, all without compromising the high protein content. So today, I'm gonna to show you how to make filet of sole two different ways. I went ahead and tried this recipe a couple months back and absolutely loved it. Quick note, these are loaded with butter recipes. So if you don't want butter, you can replace it with extra virgin olive oil, but the butter gives it a much better and richer flavor. So if you can tolerate the butter, I'd suggest to keep it as is. Stick around to the end because I'm gonna be going ahead and tasting the Mexican style versus the Cajun style and seeing which one comes out the best. Now, right before we get started, I'm gonna say something that's gonna annoy you so much that you're gonna to wanna to close this video, take your computer or your phone and throw it right out the window. Okay. Go ahead and give this video a big fishy thumbs up. And while you're at it, subscribe to the channel. When you subscribe to the channel and like our videos, it tells YouTube, hey, YouTube, get this video in front of more people right away, right now. Well, actually, I have no idea what it actually tells YouTube. All I know is that it helps with the algorithm, it gets it in front of more people, and it also supports us. So in that case, go ahead and subscribe to the channel anyways. Now that you subscribed and liked the video, let's get started. I know you're dying to get down to it. The first thing to do is to get your fish in a nice big tray. Because I'm gonna be making two different styles, I'm getting two large Pyrexes and filling them, and spreading them around evenly. If you're not a fan of sole, don't worry. Swap it for cod, swap it for salmon, swap it for tilapia, really any fish you want. No matter what you do, it's gonna come out beyond delicious. But while you're at it, let me know in the comment section down below what type of fish you prefer. Just to take a break for a second, a few people asked me on Instagram, what makes a fish kosher? So let me break it down for you. Kosher fish needs to meet two basic criteria. Number one, the water creature must have fins, like that. And number two, the water creature must have scales, like that. So some examples, salmon, tilapia, sole, tuna, all have scales and fins, making them kosher. So shellfish, for example, usually don't have scales or fins, like shrimp, crab, lobster, making it not kosher. And if it doesn't have one of the two, also doesn't make it kosher, like swordfish. Swordfish has fins, but doesn't have scales. So can't eat it. All right, let's move on. In a separate bowl, go ahead and add in a heaping amount of butter, at least three to five tablespoons. Add in a teaspoon or so of extra virgin olive oil, followed by three cloves of crushed garlic. Then for the Cajun style, add in two tablespoons of freshly chopped parsley. And for the Mexican style, add in two tablespoons of freshly chopped coriander cilantro. In the Cajun style, add in a bit of Cajun spice. And if you like a little bit of heat to it, add in some cayenne as well. And a teaspoon of cumin in the Mexican. Both get salt and pepper to taste. And mix them well. A little mistake on my part, I didn't let the butter warm up enough, so it's a bit tough to manipulate. If you want an easier way, let it warm up, come to room temp, and then you'll easily be able to mix everything together. Great. Now that the blends are done, let's go ahead and slice up some citrus. Lime for the Mexican, and lemon for the Cajun. This is the point where we preheat our oven to 400 degrees Fahrenheit. And while that's preheating, let's go ahead and layer our fish. Add the limes and the lemon in either the Mexican or the Cajun one respectively, a little bit underneath the fish and the rest on the sides and on top, followed by the buttery mixtures on each one. Remember, the lime one gets the Mexican and the lemon gets the Cajun. Spread it evenly. You want a little bit underneath, a little bit above, and a little bit on the side. 
because once it's in the oven, the butter will melt off the top and end up on the side. So you wanna make sure that some of that flavor is nicely planted on top. With both dishes buttered and ready to go, let's take a quick glance and see how they look. Mmm, those look good. Full of butter and spices, ugh. Even without cooking, you smell those incredible fragrances. As soon as the oven is preheated, get those fishes inside and set your timer for 12 minutes. If you're making cod or salmon, anything a little bit thicker than sole, you're gonna maybe wanna adjust your time to 13 to 15 minutes. Quick tip, how to tell if your fish is ready to go. Take a fork and enter it into the center of the fish. Twist it 45 degrees gently. If it's opaque and flaky, then it's done. But the best way to tell if something's cooked completely is by the internal temperature. We're aiming for 140 degrees Fahrenheit. I actually shared an entire video on different types of internal thermometer probes. I'll leave a link for it up there. Go ahead and check it out. For thin fish like this, instant read thermometer is perfect. And I'll leave a link for one in the description below. And while we wait for that timer to complete, if you haven't already, give this video a nice thumbs up and subscribe to the channel while you're at it. And leave us your feedback in the comment section down below. If you wanna see awesome pictures and different recipes that we share not on YouTube, check out our Instagram page. I'll leave a link for it also in the description below. All right, the timer is done and let's get those trays out of the oven. Don't they just look delicious? I wish you were able to smell what I'm smelling right now. Mmm, buttery, garlicky, just incredible. The Mexican one with that incredible hint of lime and cilantro. The Cajun with that spicy touch. Oh, just incredible. How do you think they came out? Let me know in the comment section. And finally, my favorite part, tasting time. Let's go ahead and see how it tastes. All right, so full disclosure, usually I don't like filet of sole. I find that it has a very fishy taste usually. This one is very different. The Cajun spice really pops out. The butter gives it an incredible texture, a really delicious and fragrant taste. That fishy smell and taste is kind of completely gone which makes it an incredible, incredible meal. Absolutely delicious. And the lemon really complements it. Now let's go ahead and taste the Mexican style. Mm. Oh my gosh, that one's my favorite. That one is definitely my favorite. Wow. The butter mixed with the coriander and the lime is really, really phenomenal. Like I mentioned, I don't normally like filet of sole, but that I would eat. That I would eat regularly. The butter comes out, completely gives an incredible taste of the fish. The coriander pops out, the different spices pop out, the lime complements it all. The lime has a different acidity taste to the lemon, to the Cajun style, but both are very, very good. Personally, I prefer the lime. Thank you for watching this video. If you liked it, the last time I'm gonna be asking, give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel and ring the bell. When you ring the bell and subscribe, YouTube will notify you of all the incredible content and videos that we have coming out. So I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you again. And I'm looking forward to seeing you in the next Impossibly Kosher video.